Now, the latest venture that you've kind of got involved with, the timing of it couldn't be better. So you're, you're getting into electric vehicles at the time that VW's getting hammered by its diesel problems. Exactly, but we started this project much earlier than this kind of... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the timing is everything, so yes. let's, let's not ignore that. The main idea of this business was... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using Tesla, and then like I wonder is why not all cars are electrical now? Yeah. And the main answer for this question is because today electrical vehicles are much more expensive than conventional one. Why? Mostly because of the cost of battery. Yep. And uh, because of the integration, because all the, all the new companies like Inventors Motors are more expensive than a normal right. one. And the objective for our team was to create the vehicle, commercial vehicle, which would be the same price as a normal one. Yep. But will consume much less fuel like then a normal one because what uh, what 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 uh, what we really do is that our car is not 100% it's 100% electrical yeah but we have um, a generator on board right. which creates the energy on the board right so that's not connected to the drivetrain that's connected to the battery so that's a range extender yes so it's a range extender to a commercial vehicle yeah so it's buses and uh, and trucks right. from 2.5 tons to 26 tons yeah. so for all range with this uh, with, with this approach we can uh, we have our, everything which is good from electrical, yep. but we don't have a limitation of range. Yep. We don't have a, uh, a necessity to create a uh, charging infrastructure, yep. and the vehicle can work all, all the time, so you don't have a charging time. So this time is the like right model, because we don't have to invest in all the stuff. When, when I try and look for an electric charging point around here, and I thought about it, it's like three within a mile. And if I'm the third, fourth guy that, get, I'm the fourth guy that gets there, I'm in trouble. You kind of solve that problem with, exactly. with this kind of... It's not a hybrid, but it kind of is. Yeah, so it's electrical because of the self-generator uh, yeah. uh, on, uh, on, on board. And with this approach, we think we address exactly the, uh, the issue yeah. with the, uh, to make it happen that electrical vehicles would... Uh, pen penetration will grow much faster than it is So now. Elon's wrong, is he? Uh, probably for uh, passenger cars, fine. Right. Because it could be a second car. Yeah. Uh, and, but, but, yeah. And for, and, but for commercial vehicles, I don't think that uh, full electrical is the right answer. Because if I, go, if I go out and buy a BMW, uh, their electric vehicles, they, they have the option of a range extender. So the, the people are doing this in, in passenger vehicles. And what I like about it is, as, as you highlighted, we don't have to invest tons of money in infrastructure. And, exactly. And we've invested so much in, in clean diesel and, and, and how much we invest in that. We don't want to make mistakes. So, this, so is the idea that you kind of limit the mistakes because actually the cash down is smaller? Yes, exactly. So uh, what, uh, what is really happening with this approach, we already see that in the city cycle, we can reduce uh, fuel consumption uh, with a factor of three. So it's three times less fuel uh, consumption will get, you will get on our truck. Right. So our truck, eight ton, it, it tons truck, it has a one liter engine. Right. So that's, uh, that's the, the story. And the good news is that we managed to create this car, so it's yeah. fully working. And what is also very important is that we created the components which would work the same component from 2.5 tons to 26. So it's a configuration okay. of one, two, three, four, or six motors. Yep. So it means we use the same components for all, right. for, uh, for all ranges. Yeah. So uh, it, it uh, allows us to make the cost of components really low because we don't need to make the special components for a particular like, car. Yeah, just put them in series and, yes, and exactly. off you go. Um, what, what, how long before we start to see sufficient scale being generated in this kind of this this part of the automotive industry that's going to allow costs to come down are you already making costs come down because you're thinking in in how do i scale this how when does the scale come to make the scale work so today the uh, all the technical work done so we yeah. have all the components and now we're already in talks with the, some oems who will produce the trucks which ones um, i will not announce it today okay uh, and uh, normally the cycle to create the car which will be on the road takes two years, yep. we will try to make it quicker. Does diesel, does the diesel scandal, no, yeah, does the diesel scandal, do you think, make regulators more, do, does, does this happen more quickly because of what is happening with Volkswagen? Do you think consumer acceptance, company involvement, etc., is, is going to be accelerating the half-life of this story? There are, actually, in our case, it's win-win. I mean, because for governments, many governments, they want to create regulation which yep. would uh, reduce the fuel consumption. But unfortunately, there are not so many uh, products on, on the yep. market, so they cannot be... Uh, like uh, tough yep. on, on that point. From other hand, uh, f uh, if you take any fleet managers, what is important for them? Yep. For them, is cost is one of the main drivers. So yeah. they are not ready to pay for the truck, like uh, which would uh, make the return investment for seven years. Yeah, they want to to make it like with the same price that it is today.
yeah. but which uh, f uh, cons consumes much less fuel, because fuel is one of the highest uh, costs uh, uh, for the uh, cost. fleet yeah. for the fleet managers. So uh, we have an answer for this. So we, our technology uh, directs exactly this issue towards this issue. Just uh, out of out of curiosity, what else is buzzing around your head right now? What like where else do you uh, see other opportunities? I will announce like two two things. One is that uh, I really believe in Internet of Things stuff because right. uh, okay. uh, you 50, invested in that. Yes. So okay. 50 billion, uh, uh, 50 billion uh, connected devices should happen within the next 10 years. Yeah. GSM networks will never hold it because yeah. I, I'm from telecom business. I know everything yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah. So there are already new te technologies which can uh, enable this, and we invest in this technology now. So we'll announce it a little bit later. What's the other one? Uh, yes. And the third one is the personal uh, health care. So I really like, believe that uh, we should own, as a, like, as a uh, person, we should own our uh, health by, by, by ourselves. Yeah. So not our doctors. So what we do right now, we are creating the uh, home lab, which could make the urine and blood analysis at home. So which would help for people who already have chronic disease to make all the analysis at home with the uh, same level of quality as the labs and for people who focus on their health to prevent any diseases. So that's, right. uh, that's the area I'm, I'm very much interested in. Proactive and reactive. Dennis, I could talk to you all day. Honestly, I, you've got to come back and you've got to do this again because it would be great to see you. Um, Dennis Vedloff, founder and CEO of Kinetic.